All right, video number two, and I'm going through the comments here. Um, this person says, you're right. Many people think the state Israel, I call it Ish, uh, Israel, show, I, don't, I can't say that word either, is the land of the chosen people. Jesus calls them the synagogue of Satan. They reject Jesus, so it should be clear that they are against Christ. You must be a Jew from the inside, not because of the outwardly things. Absolutely agree. Thank you for that. Uh, he deleted your comment. Not surprised. He, he never responded. So, no, uh, it's unfortunate. Okay, the Catholics and Jews are alike. Dude, you need to do some research. Just saying. Okay. Alright, so I... I, uh... I might have to address this and show you that the Catholics took the form of the Jewish religion and that they um, they disguised themselves as the Old Testament Jews in every form they tried to mimic Old Testament Jews and present themselves as modern-day Christians these two religions are very very similar and so maybe uh, I'll have maybe some other time I'll get into that. I won't right now. Okay. Okay. And he says, Jay Henning, I am just adding to what you're saying uh, and be found in him, having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. We all sin. It's part of being human. The difference between the saved and the unsaved is for the saved. Sinning is not fun anymore. It always comes with regret. With regard to drunkards not going to heaven, Paul was laying out the human condition of which we are all guilty to some extent or the other. He was explaining we are all guilty and in need of salvation. Faith with works, James 2.17, is so misquoted by people like this guy. In context, John 2 is speaking about the poor and charity. I like to look at it this way. If I go up to a needy person and share the gospel of faith without works and then go on my way, there's no good change. My, there's no, there's a good change. I'm sorry. There's a good change. My words will fall on deaf ears. If, however, I hand a guy 20 bucks so he can take care of his immediate needs and then share the gospel of faith with works, there's a much better chance my message will be heard, right? And so, uh, if you, you know, if you, uh, come to a needy person, I would recommend if they need clothes, to clothe them. If they need food, give them food. You give them 20 bucks, uh, they might just go out and buy a bottle of booze and get drunk, and that's okay too, but um, if he really, you know, if he really needs food, then I would say give him food, but there's nothing wrong with giving a needy person 20 bucks. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay. And then, okay, so this uh, fella here, he shares this video, and typically I'll just not even click on it and remove it, so I felt generous this morning, so I clicked on it, watched 5 minutes and 37 minutes. Uh, so this gentleman here, uh, he says that Romans 3, uh, verse uh, verses 25 and 26, proves that once saved, not always saved, okay? And rather than sharing 5 minutes and 37 seconds of nothing I'll just quote you the verse whom God has set forth to be appropriation through faith in his blood to, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus okay I'm going to try to be fair and I'll play 30 seconds of this guy Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and He is my hero, and He should be yours too. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Oh my goodness, not past, present, and future like so many people say in the churches. People in the churches love to say, my sins are all forgiven, past, present, and future. Wait a second. <laughs> Where does the scripture say that? Okay, so all right, this guy is a very eloquent uh, 
speaker speaks much better than I do. So he's saying the scripture nowhere says your sins are forgiven after you become saved. Uh, essentially what he's saying is you should wait until you're about 85 years old on your deathbed and just moments away from dying and then be saved. Because if you get saved at an early age, you're doomed, you're going to sin, and you're going to lose it. That's what he's saying. He's, uh, and he might not be honest about it, but that's what he's saying. He's saying that your sins after you've been saved are not forgiven, which is uh, incredible because you're saying that, well, you know, if you live an ungodly, sinful life, your sins will be forgiven. You know, if you don't get saved until you're 50, it's better to get saved at 50 than to f at 15 because at 15, boy, you're full of hormones and energies and, and all that sort of stuff, and you, you're going to sin. So you're saying that if you get saved when you're 15, you're going to lose your salvation. Uh, that's not, that's, you know, I pointed this out time and time again. Oh, oh, is this the right verse I'm looking for here? I'm not even sure. Okay, so I'm not sure that's the key word that I'm looking for. For Christ, I'm sorry for Okay, so what what's the phrase I'm looking for? I apologize. For I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and i died all right so that's the same book okay oh no here it is okay for all right let's see who needeth not daily as those high priests who offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once and he offered up himself um All right, so what's the phrase I'm looking for? Once, oh, once for all, right? Once for all. I think that's actually right there. If I would have just clicked. Uh, by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay, so I mean that should not that should clarify it already it just wouldn't make any logical sense if this guy was right all right so either he's confused or he's um he's a liar one of the two and so he might have he might be just like the rest of us needing to learn but when jesus christ offered his body it was uh, to cover sins once and for all, forever and ever. All right. Now, I probably should go more into that, but isn't that enough? Okay, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. So, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. If that's not enough, I don't know, you know, what more do you need? That should right there be enough. Okay, so this guy, maybe he's not gotten that far in the Bible. Okay, so he he got up and read a few verses here and there and uh, just hasn't gotten to this part of the Bible yet. That's possible. Or he's just flat out lying and he's not saved himself. And he thinks that he, through his good works, is a righteous man and that he can save himself and that Jesus Christ doesn't even matter. He's, he's uh, got the power to save himself. So I, I, I can't imagine this being any more obvious right here. Okay, so I'm not sure I got time for another. Maybe I'll have to make a third video because there is some good stuff here that I want to cover.